friends, this is Jazz, bringing you another episode of Pokemon Crimson Fury. Well, the recap, this is chapter 8 slash 7, but it's chapter 8. It is double trouble. Now, we start this chapter with a four admin administrators of the syndicate, which is Alisar himself, Courtney, who we've heard about, I believe, earlier, who was helping, you know, free Kaishis, I believe, I think, yeah, then there was Nadine, who was a new admin that used to work with Team, I know, no, she's, it's hard to explain, like, she's just an, a follower of Alisar, who's idolized by him, and we have Team Ar Rocket Archer. So two of the three other characters are from previous, you know, stories, in a way. Courtney was from Team Magma at one point. Archer was one of the pseudo-leaders of Team Rocket after Giovanni had vanished. And Nadine, again, is just obsessed with Archer. Now they're talking about all the things going on with the Syndicate. How he said most of his other you know, administrators and peons, or I don't know what they call it, out to do other work for the syndicate, but he had three special jobs for these three right there. He wants Nadine to lead the Snatchers, which is a group designated to recruit trainers into it. They see potential in them, in a way. They, she gets Archer to go with his group to find stuff that makes explosives because they're going to be using the explosives at some point in their plan because all these jobs are kind of based on what the Grand Master wants which yes he's the Grand Master is the real sort of leader in a way I think is what it is like he he's Elzar is following everything the Grand Master says but hey Courtney he wants her to use her to make up a, pros, a prophecy in a way he wants her to mess with Michael Kinston to help keep them off their make the syndicates back because she knows I guess she can make fake prophecies too I guess like with her powers so she wants to to make a fake one to drive Michael nuts in a way. Now I still I'm just trying to say like what this is the first time I believe we've seen Archer and Nadine in this story. And this is the first time we kind of, well, when I say see, I don't mean physically see, but this is the first time they, and even the first time Courtney has any pro prominence in the story, too. So, everyone is set off, and Nadine is going to work with just two new recruits, which is Lena and Lily. We'll get to them later. But speaking of, we're back with the... Was it the Heroic Trio? I'm pretty sure. And they're just discussing everything. And Addison is just studying stuff in her Pokédex, like her Poké Gear. And they're saying, well, Grass Pokémon are going to be the major threat in Craft Terrence's gym. And my and Matthew is like oh easy I'll use a Flareon because they like because fire was their weakness and then Addison's like so how are you going to evolve you need a Flareon Matt hasn't thought that far ahead yet and what is so funny is that Matt wants to be the best but he seems to go on pure strength and not knowledge or bond so he hasn't thought of how am I going to evolve my Eevee and it's funny this chapter is another example that shows the differences between all three of their well actually at least the difference between Matthew or Matthew and Addy and Ryan's style. Both Addy and Ryan are Ryan are bonding with their Pokemon. They're letting their Pokemon like well at least their Eevees anyway to bond with them like Matt, Ryan lets Eevee kind of be on his head and he's playing with the bandana. Addy is is what is it alternating between letting her Eevee just scamper about and to brushing her and holding her and Matthew has both his Pokemon on his belt like in the Pokeballs and he's not really bonded with them he figures that just battling and training is, is enough 
so it's it, it's funny that way how he's just thinking pure strength and not knowledge so much and bonding like the bond like it's so funny with Matthew he wants to be the best he wants to be the strongest but he sort of lacks the emotional attachment to them and the knowledge again you could argue well, why would he lack the knowledge because if he cared enough he would be researching everything now I'm not saying Ryan is that much better in that department like he is a little bit and he's definitely better in the Bond department, 100%. But even he doesn't think of looking up everything. That's more Addison, right? And it's, the difference with Ryan there is that he learns. I think he's the type that will learn from that mistake. Like, he'll say, okay, well, this worked this time. I'll keep note of that. With Matthew, it's just all right in for it, right? Without even really thinking. So... There is a big contrast between those two, Ryan and Matt. And what so far, who, what do I think will be more, you know, what's the word for it, more effective? Well, I mean, they both have their positive effects. Being strong is important too. It just isn't the most important thing. Like, like you couldn't have a level, for example, in the game, you couldn't have a level one Pokemon no matter how much you love them or how, st or how strategic you are. Very rarely would you out, you know, that way. So it takes a combination of everything to be a good trainer. That's my point. Suddenly, though, a stampede is set off, and Ryan gets separated from Matt and Addy because he goes back to get his bag, which again, because it's his bond, he left his, his Eevee was hiding in the bag, which is adorable, by the way. And so he grabs it, but then he kind of gets lost and falls down, and he lands right into two, two women, which are, in fact, Lily and Lena. Now, Lena has black hair, apparently. You'll see a picture, yes, unfortunately. Every time there's a new character of Providence, I have to include some type of picture at least once per video for you guys to remember and Lily or no, Lita has the dark hair and Lily has the platinum blonde almost white hair and, at, and Ryan Foss thinks oh like he overhears them right talking about how they started the stampede to distract you know the Pokemon to get what they really wanted but Ryan had to play dumb Say it oh, I just fell. And say, oh, yes, a stampede. Did you, uh, nope, nope, you know. So they freak, he's just always a kid who got lost. So when he was saying he was going to go up a way they didn't want where their prize was, they said, oh, no, you're more hurt than we thought. Let's help you. Let us let us lead you. And in other words, they're not doing it out of the kindness of their heart. They want him away from what, from what they want, right? And things are going well for them at first. And then, well, they all fall, and they all land in the one place they don't want him to find. All these giant mushrooms, and then he re finally reveals, oh, well, he sort of knows, oh, you guys are poachers, and all that, and they're saying, oh, really can't, well, we're, because they were going to start the battle. Finally, Matt and Natty show up, and Matt joins Ryan in the battle and they use Marahoot and Eevee and the two Lily and Lita use Ekans. Two Ekans. So guys, how long do you think this battle lasts? You guys could probably think, well they're new trainers, Ryan and Matt. They prob they probably wouldn't have a, such a good they beat them in like five seconds flat. I meant they beat Lily and Lena. They're green on trainers, just let you know. Matt and Ryan. How pathetic do you think Lily and Lena are to lose to Greenhorn trainers in feels like five seconds? Like I, I mean see that's where like strength can do very well, because Evie overpowered actually both of them. Like, okay, Marahoop did something. He lifted one of them up in the air, right? And Matt didn't, Matt knocked out the first Ekans with his Eevee, just a tackle, right, knocked him out. But then Ryan's Marrow drops the second 
seconds, and then Eevee tackles again and knocks that out of one hit. So technically, you could argue that Matt has something there with training them to be strong. And that worked for that situation. But that's because Lily and Lena are idiots. If they were any harder, had any more sense of tactic, that wouldn't have worked so easy. But in that situation, it, it may do, right? And Maru sends them all flying. All the mushrooms, too. Or what we'll learn is bomb mushrooms, which are a crap ton of money in the Pokey world, by the way. And, oh, were they mad. Like, they ended up going on their way, Matt and Addy and, and them. Everything is all right that way. Now we go back to Lena and Lily are all paranoid. They're scampering as much bomb mushrooms as they could find after being s scattered all through the forest. Suddenly they get a call from Nadine. Uh-oh. Yeah, they kind of get chewed out. I mean, they do beg to be able to follow the three, you know, that, you know, three kids, like them, because they beat them and that they might have potential. Nadine said the mate he said, if you can't even handle bomb, mushroom, bomb mushrooms, how can we trust you from any, everything else? But Nadine reluctantly lets them go after them, but saying that if they mess up again, they're... And as they say to each other, if we actually beat them this time, we get revenge. If not, then Nadine will let us we'll go in for the capture of them because they're, they're powerful enough, right? But honestly, though, uh, I mean, I know this is the first time we see them and the first time we see what they're capable of or not capable of but if things repeat the way they do do you think these two idiots are measurable enough to decide whether they're Ryan and Matt are strong enough to join the syndicate I would think that that well yeah you know maybe they would because I mean they recruited Lily and Lena what would happen is they would swoop those two idiots aside and take Matt and Ryan in in their place because it proves they're definitely stronger than those two right I mean again they recruited Lily and Lena so sure they would recruit Ryan and Matt if they wanted to join at this point but anyway this was a long chapter and it was not it, it was kind of just showing a bit of what's going on in the syndicate and then what is going on with Matt, Addy, and Ryan, and the two idiots, which, again, they're going to be fun to rip on. I mean, my gosh, I, I would be better than they would at doing that job. I mean, for starters, I, did, now that I think about it, though, would I be just as idiotic? I'm not in the battling department, but I guess I don't have the best executive function and abilities. I mean, if I was caught the way I was, you know, the way they were, I don't know if I would be able to even act the way they did. I mean, for a little while they were doing okay, saying, oh, you're hurt, let me lead you. But Ryan was already suspicious and heard everything. They just were stupid enough to believe he didn't. I mean, I mean, I suppose if someone really didn't hear it and they just fell, then maybe they would be able to lead them away and everything would have been golden. Then again, they tripped and led them to the spot they didn't want to expose. So, like, I cannot decide, really, at this point, as much as I call them idiots, how idiotic they are, or if I would do any better. Right? Because my acting ability, I'll admit, sucks worse than they do. Because of my, my inability to always, what is it, convey the right emotions, so... They would probably be able to tell oh, I'm lying from the beginning. Then again, Ryan didn't want them to get suspicious, right? So he was purposely acting ignorant to it until for he could get away, right? And he was scared of them in a way, too. But then he also sort of felt bad for at least Lily anyway because their acting was a decent for a little bit. I don't know, but we're going to be seeing these two in the, you know... I can't even say they the itty-ish girls later. 
So anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, like what you see, please subscribe. It helps this channel a lot. And don't forget to hit the bell notification so you'll know when new videos are coming out. And I'll see you guys in my next video.